Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges, my name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to talk about the eventual Siege rework for the Total War Warhammer series and what we actually need from it. Please keep in mind that my views are coming from a tabletop and lore perspective mostly, with some previous Total War titles in mind. So without further ado, let's begin. Sieges are perhaps the biggest flaw in the Total War Warhammer series. Not only are the maps themselves very small, but they lacked variety and, well, they just felt incredibly dull. A quick fun fact here is that the siege system implemented in Total War Warhammer is actually more so adapted from tabletop Warhammer Fantasy Battles, as you can see on the image on screen right now. On the tabletop this made sense, and that's mostly because the game was based on a 6x4 board, there's not much you can do, especially when you take the scale of the miniatures into account. But for a Total War game, we obviously deserve big sprawling castles, massive fortifications, it really depends on where you're attacking. In fact, there are loads of references to different castles in lore which Creative Assembly can take inspiration from. Now, I'm not saying that every settlement needs to be unique. That would be downright impossible, as currently there are, what, 500 or so settlements in the Mortal Empires? Asking for 500 plus unique settlements is well beyond ridiculous, it would take way too much development time. Of course, major known cities and capitals should be unique, with the minor settlements having some sort of basic framework. Corner styled castles are fine now and then, but a 360 degree map is obviously also better. A healthy mix of both would at least give you incentive to do sieges more rather than just aura resolving it. In my opinion, a healthy mix of both is probably the best as it will break up the monotony here and there. Wishful thinking would be hoping that as new DLC is added in for the third and final game of the series, we'll also get more and more maps added in, but that's very doubtful as, well, like I said, it's wishful thinking. Though the sentiment remains the same, we need multi-layered walls, like the one that was shown in the trailer for Warhammer 1. More complex maps are also needed, not just the 360 degree maps, but those on the corner or on the side of the battle map itself. Itself. The positioning itself is okay, it's nothing perfect but it's okay, it's just the maps themselves are way too similar and way too boring. The return of deployables is also very much requested, and fun fact, the tabletop also had access to these too. Now, deployables in other Total War titles could be used in both sieges and normal battles. However, in the case of Warhammer, I don't think it's too well needed for normal battles. You couldn't really use them on the tabletop either, and that's because there's already so much going on on the battlefield. However, for sieges, where most of the battle will be concentrated in certain locations, deployables would work rather well here, especially as a defender. Just some basic stuff will change the game dramatically, for example getting some basic barricades up to block some passageways. Your enemy can then decide to either destroy the barricades or find a different route to the capture point or to your units themselves. Something so basic as barricades can add a lot of flavour to a system which is just very much needing of it. Enemy AI needs to be improved dramatically for a siege rework, especially when they're defending a location. It's too often where you're able to just sit back and fire with a bunch of artillery, take out their cannons and they'll just stay there. The NPC faction is more than happy to take the damage if they can't reach you in any way shape or form. There are cases where you're attacking an enemy fortification and their army is actually very powerful but since you're standing back and doing damage from afar, they're not going to come for you. The AI should be able to calculate that yes, they have a strong force, and if that is the case, then they should sally forth and go and attack you. I'm not just referring to the fact of sieges, as obviously they can sally forth from there, even though it's generally not so common. There are cases where you can just starve out an enemy army, and yeah, that should be fixed too. But I'm talking about the battle map itself. If you're taking too long as you are firing constantly from afar with artillery and so on, they should send out some forces to meet you in battle. 
these are obviously things from previous Total War games that really should be included in Total War Warhammer. Now let's look specifically at Total War Warhammer itself, as there are a few things that could be changed within the game just to give the sieges a bit more flavour. Firstly, certain units, not just basic infantry, should be able to climb up on the walls. I'm of course referring to weapons teams for the Skaven and the Vampire Coast, and some monstrous infantry which you would know would fit on walls, like for example some skin wolves, croxigores, even some minotaurs. They're not that big and should be able to fit there without a problem. The units themselves aren't really too large, and when you take into account the actual size of the vanilla based walls, they should be able to fit there. Now of course for balancing purposes maybe units such as the Croxigors and Minotaurs would have to be forced to use their walking animations when on walls. Weapons teams themselves for any race and faction that may have them are small entities, there's nothing too complex about them. Sure all of the entities might not get line of sight but then again that works perfectly fine. It's still something that you were able to do on the tabletop and it's something more or less similar to putting artillery on walls as you could do in former Total War games. Also, we have to take into account that if big monsters such as dragons and terrorgeists can land on walls to attack enemy units, then why can't certain monstrous infantry or weapons teams be mounted atop of walls? If big monsters such as that can clearly fit, then so can they, as they are minuscule compared to them. This is something that we know has been added in by mods, so we know it's perfectly possible. But whilst we're on that topic, certain spells also need to be looked at when in relations to siege warfare. Stuff like Invocation of Nehek should be able to heal entities upon walls without a problem, and of course regenerate any lost units if it's possible to do so. Again, this is something which has been done by modders, so we know it's entirely possible, but that's not the only thing which is weird to me in a certain sense. We have to look towards stuff like breath weapons or wind weapons. They seem to suffer against hard terrain, more specifically walls, where they'll just start bouncing around and it is completely odd to me. The spells themselves should be able to go through walls, and if anything is in its way then well it's just going to take some damage. Yes this might sound like it's a tad overpowered, but bear in mind that it still works the same way as you would in normal battles. If you can manage to scrunch up the enemy in certain locations, you'll just cast a wind spell and take out as many as you can, or a breath spell, or even a vortex. So the fact that some of them can't be cast to the top of walls or go through walls is very alien to me. Now that's just my take of what's available in Total War Warhammer itself that could be expanded upon, but we do have one more final thing to look at, and that is the tabletop itself. Back in the days of Warhammer Fantasy Battles 8th edition there was an expansion known as Blood in the Badlands. We've covered this before last year in its own video, but it bears repeating as it does have some stuff which could greatly benefit both attackers and defenders. Some basic examples for the attackers would be as follows. The Empire could upgrade its siege tanks to have a battering ram. Why have a normal battering ram as the Imperials where you could have a steam tank instead? Monsters which would be able to use weapons such as giants could be able to be upgraded too, where they would be able to have some form of monstrous equipment. Giants would be able to attack walls for example. Another interesting one would be that of the Vampire Counts, where they would be able to awaken the dead within the city walls itself. This would catch the defenders unprepared as the very dead within the walls begin to rise up against them. For the defenders you would have a large variety of different options too. Cauldrons of Boiling Oil is a perfect example, where you would have these atop of battlements and any enemies that would be under it would be subject to, well, boiling alive. Hellgates would provide for a breath weapon on your actual gate, so if any enemies are trying to force themselves onto the gate, you can try use a breath weapon with maybe one or two charges just to weaken them as much as possible. You could even upgrade certain towers on your tabletop games to act as their own wizard towers, meaning that they would also have some bound spells which they could use. I believe all that was suggested in the video is entirely possible from a siege rework, 
and since Total War Warhammer 3 has been in development for quite some time, it could be possible that we might see these things. In truth, I want this and more, as there are certain things that could be done to make each respective race more unique as of course sieges work in a variety of different ways for each of the different races of Warhammer Fantasy, so I might even delve into this more into a full on series, but let me know what you think about that, where I would be going over each respective race in the Warhammer Fantasy universe already implemented in the Total War franchise, and seeing how sieges could be made unique for them specifically. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that my friends we've come to the end of our video, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products not just Warhammer for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.